Hello and welcome to episode 21 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Back from the game show edition. That was pretty fun. That was really fun. <laughs> I, I was totally shocked that I won. I was <laughs> totally prepared to perform that banana sprite challenge and I was so stoked that I didn't have to. <laughs> With a little controversy, but well, I'm sure we'll get to that. So let's go ahead and get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Best place to bring it up. Brandon was tired that night. We just got done <laughs> watching Night of Champions. It was 12 o'clock at night. He was using the, the counter on his phone. Instead of just using a pen and paper, he was not prepared for the pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> so he accidentally cleared the score a couple times. Well, to be fair, the clear button was kind of vague and I couldn't really see it. <laughs> so when I was, and it's right next to the up and down buttons of player score. So once I hit clear, it would clear both of them. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't know what I did at first. And then I looked down and it said clear very <laughs> faintly. <laughs> so how about we don't use that app anymore? <laughs> <laughs> so the controversy is Brandon cleared our score and I ended up having one less point <laughs> that at the end of the game, which if you listen to the podcast, we act I actually lost by one point, so it would have been a tiebreaker. <laughs> but as I told Brandon during the week, it's all in the game. <laughs> when, you, when you go to sports game events. We just got done watching wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> make bad calls all the time. There was a fast count controversy on the Night of Champions when Daniel Bryan beat uh, Randy Orton. And that's just part of the game. You just have to accept it and take it. Except mine wasn't scripted. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad that's the punishment I had to do because all I do is eat two bananas and just drink some Sprite and throw up three times. I would have <laughs> done that challenge because I would have had to do Diet Sprite. And, oh, gross. and I would have had to do Sierra Mist since I don't drink Coke products. <laughs> <laughs> So when I asked you who do you like better, New Kids on the Block or Shakira, you said New Kids on the Block, and they endorsed Coke. Right, and then I said, quickly changed my mind. I said, I didn't know that. <laughs> they suck now, and now I like Shakira and Beyonce. All right. So let's go into Treasure Hunt. Wait. What? Do we have a punishment outline for episode 25? Uh, I hadn't thought about it yet. Okay. We, we can discuss that. I mean, if you have any ideas. I don't have any ideas. What? You, you always want to like bring it up and you're like, I don't know, I don't have any ideas. <laughs> that just popped into my head. I don't know. We could do something similar to, to the Banana Sprite Challenge. Um, some A few people have asked me about the Cinnamon Challenge, and the only thing I have against that is that I've heard it's like bad on your lungs, like the, the powder gets like clogged, it gets get clogged in your throat and your lungs. Yeah. So I'd, I don't really want to do anything that could have, you know, possible... Health <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just want to see you vomit a couple times or something like that. That's all I want. <laughs> Maybe we could look online for some vomit challenges. <laughs> There's one, um, I think it's a challenge where you have to drink a gallon of milk or something like that. But you have like a 24-hour period to do it, so it wouldn't work. And plus, I can't drink milk or I'd throw up instantly. Oh, that, no, you just <laughs> have to drink a glass of milk then. <laughs> Milk's disgusting, except in cereal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to do, I have to say though I think Brandon mentioned this to me the 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 chal or the the question what was it the potent potable question where I had to <laughs> talk like a Sasha Baron Cohen character for two questions I think he said he originally planned on having some sort of points attached to it <laughs> and I got no points for that so I think that makes up for the point that that Brad lost it does so this is going to be a pretty epic treasure hunting reveal huh yes it is it's tight let's get into it. Let's right. do this. I got Find it out. <laughs> I got a D20. Mm. Why are you getting a D20? For the punishment. Oh. And to see who reveals first. <laughs> ten. Brad got ten. Eight. Okay, my first reveal is going to be that book right there. Okay. Metal Gear Solid for Guns of Patriots. Tactical Espionage Action. I'm guessing it's some sort of collector's edition. Strategy guide. Hecatite. It is nice. Yeah, got a, cover. Got a nice picture of Snake on the cover. 
and maps on the inside, and it's outlined pretty well. So I got this at the Goodwill. They had an orange sticker on the spine of it for $19.99. Oh, man. I ripped that nice. sucker off, and I put a <laughs> sticker on it for $1.25. <laughs> There's no way I was going to be paying $20 for that. <laughs> you were <both> good, Will. <laughs> <laughs> they rip off retarded people every day. Oh, do they? <laughs> How do they do that? They don't pay them. They <laughs> just chain them in on ropes and then, <laughs> and then make them sort stuff and they don't pay them. And you have proof of this? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only got two items with me, so... Okay. Here's my next item. Hold on. I, I, this, I've seen this go online for $30 on the refined search. Okay. Uh, on a few listings, so I'm going to put it on 30 Okay. Like your Star Wars album that still hasn't sold for 15 bucks, even though you said it was worth 50 to 100 Yeah, it, it sold. I don't know why that one's not selling. Brandon has put on a Auto, Auto Nation baseball cap. I am predicting that he's going to turn it back <laughs> right over the top style. Now made himself into the mach the machine form. <laughs> yeah. Mech Brandon. El Machino. Super Nintendo Kart from Dimple. Mm -hmm. Super Mario Kart. Pretty tight. Yeah, there's this one nerd guy uh, with his mother there. He was about 40, conservatively, and she was well into her ages, and he was just asking this teller, let me see everything you have behind the counter that you haven't put out yet. And he was getting all these games, and he was like, Mario Kart, already have it. I was like, I'll take that. Were there any other good things? Uh, he got like 40 winks, a PlayStation game. It's not worth it. How much did Mario Kart worth? Fifteen tight. It sucks though. I paid eight ninety nine for it. Oh, uh, I think we should put a rule that you have to make fifty percent. <laughs> I mean, I'll let this one because fifteen that's fifty percent to me. Eight fifteen is close. Uh -huh. So I think we should at least make fifty percent. Yeah, that's fine. In order to buy it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Fine with me. Okay. This next item is not going on the treasure trove. It's for our own collection. So we're not making money off of it? No. So Okay. So um, I bought this from, I don't know if you've been to downtown Dimple. Yeah. Did you notice the store next to it, that's the poor man's Dimple. No. It's, it's a thrift shop. It's got games, records. It's like Dimple, but it run down. And it smells like cat poop in there. Is it the, for the bookstore? It's the one right to the left of that. Oh, I haven't been there. They got a big Mario thing in there. Oh. It, it sucks, but I went, all his Nintendo games were priced for one ninety five, and I saw this little gem in there. We didn't have it yet. And this is the only one you saw? There are more, but no, not worth. Street Fighter 2010, that's tight. The final fight. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I saw it at Denial's for $10 a few months ago and almost bought it. Yeah. But I'm glad I held out because this guy... That's tight. Sold it for It's supposed to be um, Street Fighter for Nintendo. How much is that worth? I didn't look it up. Okay. I think like 5 to $7 last time I looked it up. Okay. So do you want me to keep her Keep going because I've got a gem in my bag. I know we'll probably win this treasure hunting, but... So I know you might have thought this is an ordinary blanket here. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you told me not to look under it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not... That's... Isn't that like a knockoff of Guitar Hero? That's made by Guitar Hero. It's Band Hero. Okay. Donated by the very kind Roxanne Cheryl. Okay. Still new in the box. Uh, never been opened. Right. And at first she told me it was Rock Band, uh -huh. but it was Band Hero. So uh, Rock Band would have been worth $90 new in box. This is worth 80 Okay. So. All right. Keep going. So Roxanne basically gave you 80 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Does she realize that items have work? Yeah. <laughs> I told her I wanted it for my collection. <laughs> Jeez, here we go. Dude, you gotta stop with the sports memo, Gloria. <laughs> That's the knockoff uh, Carl's Jr. bobbleheads. <laughs> what do you mean knockoff? The, the ones that you had... <laughs> <laughs> Did I already pay for half of this garbage? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so, 
These sold as a complete set out of the box for sixty dollars. So I'll, I'll put them up and see what they could go for. Okay, that's fine by me. I'm trying to figure out who they are just by looking at them. I think there's Brad. The white ones look the same. Is that Chris Mullen? I think the other white one is actually Mike Bibby. There's. Um, I think it's Brad Miller, Mike Bibby. I think I saw Lawrence Funderburg. There's Brad Miller. I, I want to figure it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's Mike Bibby, I'm pretty sure. I don't think you got Brad Miller in your hand. No, this is Brad Miller. No, this isn't Mike Bibby. Not? No. Oh, it's Darius and Garza. Oh, no, there wasn't any Lawrence Funderburg either. Okay, I, I cheated now. You can say it. You can say who they are. I don't know if I want to now. <laughs> so we have Brad Miller, Darius Sangalia, <laughs> Matt Barnes, <laughs> Greg Ostertag, <laughs> and Chris Weber. <laughs> Evil Dead, Hell to the King for PlayStation Complete. That's $13. Okay. But Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards, and Mario Kart 64. Oh, that'd be good with the Mario Kart. These are my last items here. I went to Dimple last week. I found a whole buttload of Sega Genesis games for $1.99 each. Yeah, and I usually go to this downtown Dimple all the time, and the day I don't go, he ends up scoring all these huge Genesis games. So what did the guy look like who was like, in? Uh, he had a beanie with long hair. He looked stupid like he was retarded. Did, like, did, he, did it come down like that? And he has a lip piercing. Oh, okay, I don't know. Did he recognize you? No. Or I, you don't go I, there often enough to be recognized? The ones in Arden do, because I go there every day at work. Did they, did they recognize the difference between the two of you? The Sunrise does. <laughs> mm. So these ones I want to do as a set. Okay. So we reveal them all at once. Sure. Oh, Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. That's tight. How much are these worth? Five dollars each, but if you bundle them, you get more. Okay. So it's the whole set. We got a little black game next. Uh, game Gear? Yes. Nick would know all about Game Gear. Game Gear's tight. Tales Adventures. I don't know about that game, huh? Tales Adventures. <laughs> <laughs> That's an $18 faggot right there. 18 Jeez. There's one Tell Sky Adventure, which is worth 40 You do the top one first. They're separate games. Robocop versus Terminator. That's heck of tight. <laughs> I don't want to play that. It's, it's heck of fun. I yeah. played it the other. I got an extra copy, too, at home. Cool. Ooh, Rocket Knight Adventures. That one's supposed to be worth some money, huh? 15 Cool. How about Robocop? Uh, 12. Okay. So you forgot to bring an SNES cart? Yeah. W what is it? It was one of your top favorite superhero movies of all time. Superhero movies? Yeah. Remember we did superhero movies? Yeah. It was on your list. It was a game version. And you could beat it on Super Mania. <laughs> Batman Returns. Yep. That's tight. <laughs> <laughs> Found that at Goodwill for five bucks if worth ten. This is my big reveal for Sega. Oh, Battletoads. That's tight. Battletoads for Sega Genesis. Never seen it before. With yeah. $18. That's cool. Before you reveal your final item, did you hear... That's what I found on uh, Reddit. They had people prank calling the guys on Pawn Stars. Mm -hmm. Asking for Battletoads. One night, they called them like 20 times. No, I didn't see that. And every they put out the script. He'd say, gold and silver. And then he'd go... Yeah, hi, I'm looking for a game for my son. Looking for um, Battletoads. You guys have it? And the first response is, shut the fuck up, buddy, and he hangs up. Because <laughs> people call, print call him all the time about having Battletoads. And he falls right every time. <laughs> so that just reminded me of that. That's funny. Here's my favorite girl. Fuck. What the fuck? Metroid Prime Trilogy, Metal Case. I don't know why you why you're doing this on treasure hunting because I'm keeping this. <laughs> it's worth like eighty dollars, right? Yeah. yeah, that's tight. I uh, got it from Dimple. I was at the Super Sites one, and I said, "Do you guys have Metroid Prime Trilogy?" He's like, "No, but our um, Elk Grove store does." I like you. Can you transfer it over? So then they called me the El Grove store and said, oh, we had a mix-up this weekend. Where are we supposed to ship it to? I said, 
I'll be right there to pick it up. <laughs> so I used a 20% discount on this and that's got it so for tight. 28 bucks. I, I, I kind of figured that's what it was because you said it was a transfer and I was like, you could only transfer Wii or PlayStation 2 or GameCube. And I was like, it's got to be Metroid Prime Trilogy. Faggot. <laughs> and, it was only, like, and it was only listed as $28. Uh, 33 but I had 28, I had 20% oh, yeah. discount. Does it have the book in it too? And I was like, why didn't Brad ever ask? Because I'm pretty sure this has been sitting on the shelf for yep. a long time. Look at that book and everything. And look at this. What's that? Oh, what's this? And this? <laughs> and, <laughs> and this is? <laughs> Cracker. <laughs> uh, this is a Metroid Prime trilogy. It's got oh, like wow. the lineage of all the Prime games. Wow. My dick just hit the table. <laughs> That's tight. Yeah. So what, you never thought of asking if they had, had this game in? Not until you asked, until you called me. I was like, oh, that's what he probably did. Because <laughs> like, why am I going to look through all these Wii cases when they have them in the system? You also, oh, we should ask for One Piece, too. One Piece is worth a lot of money. Really? Yeah. Cool. So, good score this week. So I think... I, so since we both got over ninety dollars, I think we don't have to do the will of punishment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we still should do a podcast. <laughs> I was I was seeing if you were going to go along with that. <laughs> okay. So it didn't work. No. All right. Here's mine. Can I see the list? I want to read my own fate. Nick, can you tell me what number it rolls on? Sure. It's like an eight. <coughs> punishment's choice. Punishment's choice? Yeah, so I get to pick my punishment. Um, I'll do a minus five to my trigger bank next week. You don't want to do a corn dog? No. No clinching. <laughs> yeah, no clinching. <laughs> eight again. I get a free dimple movie. Tight. So I'll be sure to bring a free dimple movie for you t tomorrow or next time I see you. It's not <laughs> my choice. <laughs> Did we say that was it one of your choices? Yeah, I can. Just let me know what you want. Mega Man X? Yep. So we <clears throat> we each got a turn at playing Mega Man X. How'd it go for you guys? I enjoyed it. Great. Yeah. It's very fun. Uh, probably, probably my second favorite Mega Man game after Mega Man 2. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah, it's and very fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, the one thing that I didn't like in the previous Mega Man games, they allowed you to slide. They didn't allow you to slide in this one. They just allowed you to dash. Yeah. And the whole pressing forward, forward in order to dash kind of threw me off. And there were like certain spots where like, I wanted to dash quicker. Like, I just wanted to press a button and dash instead of jolting forward and then, and then dashing. You, you can go to A. Can you? Yeah. Oh. A. And I that. <laughs> and right next to the jump button. Oh, well, my bad. <laughs> but anyway, I still think sl the sliding is better than the, the dashing. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and I liked how they uh, used those energy sub-tanks that you could, like, refill them. Um, I liked that concept. I definitely liked that they did away with the store concept. I thought that was kind of silly <laughs> to me. I'm sure it'll pop, pop back up in later games, but... Um... I like how they had the upgrades uh, actually built into the levels. Again, doing away with the story, I was all about that. Um, Doctor Light basically hid these capsules throughout uh, throughout the world for Mega Man to to upgrade his armor, to upgrade his uh, cannon, to upgrade his headgear, and also to uh, what the other ones? <laughs> the, 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 what are they called? The leg vacuum or something like that? Is that something different? You you never heard that before? No. Uh -uh. oh. I think I've heard it called the leg vacuum before, but I don't know. It's supposed to allow him to dash, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's I, I love that game and I was glad that we played it. Definitely brought back some good memories. I would say by far my favorite boss to fight was Flame Mammoth. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Because he was big and he had the oil slick. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just 
I'm just saying. Uh, I like because he's the first boss I always go fight uh, and I always beat him heck of quick. That's funny when I um he was the third boss I fought and when I got to his level his all the lava was frozen. No, you yeah, because you beat the Chill uh, Penguin. Chill Penguin first. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, that's that's another thing that's kind of new with this one is that if you beat other levels, it affects what happens on the levels mm-hmm. that you play after that, which is also a cool concept. I take that back. I think I beat Chill Penguin first because I wanted to get the boots first. Yeah. Yeah, I always do Chill Penguin first also. So I, I actually ended up beating all eight levels, all eight stages without using any sub-weapons or getting any heart, heart containers. But wait, did you get E-Tanks? I did, but I never used them. And um, it was hard. Um, the hardest boss for me doing that was the Charge Mandrill. He's Stark Mandrill? Yeah, he's so hard because he takes away... Every time you touch him, he takes away four lives. And he just charges at you constantly. So I, that was, I think, the hardest. The Octopus was pretty hard until I realized to not keep charging my weapon to fight him, just keep uh, auto-firing, and it would destroy all his little missiles and fishies mm-hmm. that he shot at you. Mm-hmm. So was each boss named after an animal in this game? Yeah, I think so. What was a spark mandrel? Is a mandrel an actual... I think it's some type of monkey. Oh, what about Boomer Coanger? Oh, man, I don't know what that thing is. It's like a beetle. <laughs> oh, is it? I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it is. Dung beetle. I guess you're right. I never, I never realized that. But I did not beat the game. I, I would kept trying over and over again. I got Path Vile once, and that guy, he's just so fast. And um, I'm gonna go back and get some hearts before fighting him again. Go Hadouken him. No. You said that you didn't use any upgrades. So like, you didn't grab. The armor upgrade? Oh, I grabbed the armor. Okay, so you just didn't grab the heart. Yeah. And I think you have to get the uh, boot upgrade. Yeah, yeah, you have to. to It's it's like in the way. (laughs) Yeah. So I got all the armor upgrades, but um, I I got a few sub tanks, I think three out of the four, and I just never used them. Yeah, I love how they placed hidden items throughout all the levels, and you didn't know where they were. You had to go back and... Find them all. Yeah, but you didn't have to use Rush Search for them. Oh, God. I hate that thing. Yeah. And Rush wasn't even in the game. No. no because uh, that's not his dog. Oh, because it's X. Not it's the different... Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Nick Brennan and I found out that during the opening scene, if you read it, there's two different Mega Mans. There's Mega Man X and Mega Man. And Mega Man X takes place way in the future. There's also a kick-ass cartoon of Mega Man that uh, there's an episode when Vile comes back to try to get some plutonium or whatever, and X comes with them, and so they're fighting alongside trying to beat Vile because Mega Man's pellets don't hurt Vile or any of the bosses that come with it. It's so, if, cool. so if Mega Man or Rockman were to come to X's world, he probably he's probably still alive, but he's probably hiding because he can't do anything. Yeah, he's not equipped to deal with the Repletoids or the Mavericks or whatever they are. Mavericks, I think. Reploids? Reploids, yeah. So what goes on after Vile? A bunch of crap. You didn't even get to the bot, so you never beat Vile. Uh, no, he only had a few... Vile was only like a sub-boss in that level. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. after that you fight this spider-looking thing that climbs down these poles. Well, mm-hmm. actually, I guess he descends down these poles. Yeah. But there's like little bars in between the poles, so you don't know which one he's going to come. Oh, it's kind of yeah. like a... Uh, what's that called? Like Chinko? I, I was going for like Plunko or something like that. Oh, the, yeah. That Price is Right game yeah. where you drop the disc and oh, you yeah, don't know yeah. which thing it's going to fall in. That's kind of the same concept. I mean, you, you get a little bit of an idea, but it's so hard to move out of the way if he goes to the pool that you're standing next to. I I just took the damage and mm-hmm. got a hit and made sure to get a hit on him every, every time. Every time he hit me, I died because I wanted to kill him with the Hadouken. <laughs> and I was successful. <laughs> oh, you can only use it with full life, huh? Yeah, and, and um, when he gets to the bottom, there, his little back opens, so you have a split second to hit him. So I timed it right, like after my fourth try, and killed him <laughs> in one hit. <laughs> I did not do that. <laughs> Could the, did you think about using like an energy tank or something? Yeah, I did. I still. <laughs> it took four men. Really? Yeah. The way that the uh, the last few levels were set up. 
it was a lot easier than past Mega Man games um, because you could, like I said, you can just fill up your energy tanks. So th there's this beginning, the beginning part of Armored Armadillo stage. Th there's a section right in the beginning where there's just bats everywhere, mm -hmm. and you can just fill up your energy tanks. It probably takes like three or four minutes. Oh. It's really yeah, easy. It sucks because I filled mine up at six minutes level where you, the little worms come out of the worms. No way, you did not. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <It> took forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time every time I needed to fill up my energy tank, so I would just do it in between levels and go to Armored Armadillo stage. Oh, that, that, guy so quick. Quick. that guy's a bitch too, Armored Armadillo, with just Mega Buster. Because oh. you can't hit him with a charge blast unless uh, he's not shooting the energy out of his forehead. I've never even tried to beat him without hitting him with the spark thing first. Yeah, yeah. the spark thing first that just pussifies him so much. Yeah, it makes him the unarmored Armadillo. Yeah. <laughs> So you have to keep um, rapidly hitting or he'll absorb your attack and shoot it back at you. Huh. I like the theme of this game. It was a lot more dark than any other Mega Man's we played. Uh, just like how was it Vile's arm got cut off by Zero in the beginning. Someone's arm got cut off, I thought. And it was, it was like dark. And that's why I like it a lot. Well, they killed off Zero. Like right in that battle with Vile, right? Yeah, at the end. Yeah. That's pretty dark. Yeah. I mean, you usually don't see anyone die. Like, I think he comes back. I know, but it's you get the yeah. idea that he's dead. Yeah, but when you're... Well, I remember being a kid playing that and being like, what? We wanted to play a Zero so bad. But then when we got a chance to win the, the other ones, we're like, Zero sucks. <laughs> but he doesn't come back in that game, though. No. So you're left with the impression that he's dead. And he was made by Wily, too. Yeah, but getting to Sigma, and he could rape Dr. Wily so hard. He's Oh, my God. He's, he's a beast. First, he sends his dog after you. <laughs> uh, Is it a lion? Lion, dog, whatever, same thing. And I just hadoukened it. And then he comes at you with a lightsaber, and I hadoukened him too. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I did. <laughs> and then on uh, his final form, I used a combination of the Mega Buster and the Armored Armadillo weapon. Yep. Is that that rolling ball? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, the, I was telling Brandon when, he, when I heard he was going to try to beat the game without any uh, heart tanks. Or using any uh, energy uh, tanks at all, he is, he's going to have such a hard time doing that in the last form of Sigma because there's just some attacks that you cannot avoid. It's like impossible to not get hit. Is that when he's his giant head? Yeah, his head's in the middle of the screen, up way up top, so you can't hit it unless there there are these two hands that have lightning bolts that shoot shoot out of it, and occasionally one will drop down and try to crush you. You have to jump onto that hand, and then that's the only way you can hit him. You have to get on the hand, the hand elevates, and then you can hit him in the head. But you can't even stay on that platform, because again, lightning not only do lightning bolts shoot downward, but they shoot up as well. Uh, so if you stand on there, you're just going to get hit again. You have like maybe a second or two that you you can stand on there before you have to jump off. That sucks. And then some of his attacks, like from the middle of the room, he'll shoot these little spark balls at you. Which you can kind of avoid if you time it correctly, but he also shoots a, a, a steady stream of a fire, like a flamethrower, mm. and it just goes from one corner of the room to the other. It's it's like impossible to avoid. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, you basically have to use energy tanks. There's, I I don't see how anyone could possibly not use an energy tank fighting Sigma. I use all four of mine, and that even that took me like four times. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Did you ever beat Mega Man 9? No. <laughs> that is horrible. I, I would equate that to beating <laughs> Mega Man 9. <laughs> that's that's going to be really hard. That game is so cheap. It's not cheating, it's just cheap. <clears throat> My kids came to me and was like, are you going to beat the game without getting hit? Because there's, ah! there's a trophy like that. Yeah, you have to beat the game without getting hit ever. That's like, insane. No. And there's one where you have to be the end without missing with your buster. Stupid. That's like a dumb. Yeah, that that really made me not want to play the game. So as much as I liked the game, um, I didn't really notice too many themes or ideas that kind of called back to other games like I had noticed in past games. Mm -hmm. Like I noticed something from Zelda or from a Mario Brothers game or something like that. I didn't really notice anything like that in this game. Except for, of course, Sudoken. <laughs> I thought that was awesome, of course, that how they threw in the ability for Mega Man to get the Hadouken um, and Armored Armadillo stage. And that I, the, the sucky thing about that, like we mentioned, you can only use it when you have full power 
and you can only use it on the ground. You can't jump up and use it. And it takes, I don't know, maybe a second or so to, to actually use it. So you're basically left defenseless mm -hmm. while you're charging that. And you and can't move at all. And he says it to the Hadoken. Yeah, Hadoken. <laughs> but it's cool, though. I mean, it's super powerful. Like Brad and I were saying, we use it to, to beat the, the, the dog boss or lion boss, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the second form, uh, or actually, I guess it'd be the first form of Sigma, just right away. So it's super powerful. It's just hard to actually use on anything. But it was a cool little wrinkle in the game. Kind of, what do they call it? Um, cross promoting Capcom games. Yeah. Was there anything in particular that you guys liked or disliked about any of the levels or anything like that? Hmm. I really liked how they changed the level based on the bosses you beat. Because being yeah. the chill penguin, you don't have to worry about the lava and flame mana stage. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things were cool. Yeah, I just my only gripe was the charge mandrill and uh, the armored armadillo. They were pretty hard, but once you just slow down, I think it took me about eight minutes to be that armored armadillo. It was rough. Yeah, I, I like the wall jumping. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that concept as well. The fact that you could uh, scale the walls and. Not only jump on the same wall, but jump from wall to wall. That was cool. There was also a thing, I think it was in um, uh, one of the upgrades that you got. I think it was in the, the chameleon level, um, Sting Chameleon or whatever his name was. Uh, you had to drop down a hole, but you couldn't get to it unless there was water in the hole. But I think that water wouldn't be there unless you had already beaten the octopus stage. That's right. So that's another example of something that you would have had to have done before actually going to that level. Was that uh, an E tank or a heart? It was a heart. Oh, okay. I think the armor upgrade was down there too, no? No, I don't remember that. Uh, I, I didn't write it down, so I don't know. Oh, no, that the chameleon armor is up the waterfall. In the chameleon stage, you have to jump up the. Oh, that's right. It's right by there. It's just up yeah. top instead of down below. That's and that guy was heck of rough. He had heck of life. Yeah, yeah. He was easy to beat, though. Yeah, he was, he was just tedious because he had so much life. And I'm like, oh, he has a lot of life because he gives you the armor upgrade. That makes sense. Yeah. But he didn't have much offense, though. Nah. <laughs> it was very easy to avoid. Yeah. That's a, another thing that I noticed. I, like I said, I think it's admirable that you're trying to beat it without the heart tanks. But the bosses compared to past Mega Man's are actually a lot easier. Oh, yeah, they are. And I, I don't mind that, really. I mean, I think it makes the game more enjoyable if it's not incredibly difficult. And that's part of the reason why I enjoy this game so much. It, it doesn't like stress you out too much. It's just mm -hmm. a fun game. Yeah. Some of the other <laughs> Mega Man games, there are parts where it's just like, this is so fucking frustrating. I don't even want to play. Yeah. But this game was like, I it's just fun all the way through. Mm -hmm. And I like, I appreciated that. <clears throat> no, I think I'm good. Top five. Here we go. Bringing you to the top five. So top five Super Nintendo games. You want to do a D20 to see who yeah. goes first? I love rolling dice. That's my rule. 16. Oh, we got the nuts. Number 20 for Critical, Brandon. Critical hit. <laughs> I learned my D20 spinning from Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> ha, you one uh, loser. So it will go clockwise. This was a really rough list for me. Oh, I, my God. I, I, uh, there are so many great games on Super Nintendo. I don't think we've started the top five list, is it? Have we? What's that? Have we mentioned what the top five list is? I think Brandon said it. Did you? I didn't hear you say it. Top five Super Nintendo games. SNES 16 bit. Greatest console ever. It is. What are you doing? I'm getting my cards out. <laughs> <laughs> they oh. came in the mail today. My Dragon Ball cards. <laughs> It's good that you're getting those out right now because you'll need them for the top five list. <laughs> they just distracted me. <laughs> Some more cards, I, um, I assume. <laughs> what? It's only two more. What do you mean, only two more? You got more than the other two? I got one more. Which one? The Mechian Focusing Effort. You know, for a limited, I needed one for my deck. That's tight. Is it a rare? It's an uncommon from the Android Saga number 63. I didn't even know. I thought you had all those. No. That's why I went online for a penny. No, I, I, I have one, but not for the binder. 
What's up with this Kings memorabilia over here? This Mike Bibby bobblehead and the Sacramento Kings playing cards. The the Sacramento Kings playing cards is what I bartered the Gatorade with. Now remember you telling me that or hearing the, about that. And then the the Bibby bobblehead with the two cards. I found it at the Goodwill for two dollars. <laughs> Thought it might be worth something. It's a part of his jersey, and it's <laughs> the other one is an official signed card. You didn't decide to put that in your treasure collection? No. Are, is sports memorabilia officially uh, off limits? I think it is now. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's like Michael Jordan yeah. or uh, Troy Ekman or Dan Marino. Or Danny Ainge. All right, number five. I'm putting this on my list because its 8-bit version was on my top five NES list. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that game is... I like it because... Each, were, never mind. Each weapon you got, there's more weapons than in the NES version. Like, you got a lance or a dagger, a fireball, uh, a psych. Yeah. And not only did was, were each weapon different, but they had different armors. You had your basic armor, your green armor, and your... Silver, I thought. Or is it green? It's green? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's green. And a gold armor. And when you get the green and the gold <coughs> armor, it upgrades your weapons. And it was pretty cool. Uh, it followed in the same storyline. Guinevere gets taken because she just gave up anal to Arthur <laughs> in the graveyard. <laughs> and you have to go through seven or eight hellish levels. And once you get to Lucifer... He sends you all the way back to the beginning of the game. You have to get Guinevere's bracelet and make it all the way back to fight him. The bosses were pretty cool. They were huge. They were huge bosses. Mm -hmm. um, and didn't when you come back to the game, you got shields. You got the blue shield and the red, the moon shield and the sun shield. And then you also got a power bracelet, which upgraded you even stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, like the level 4 boss, you actually got inside the belly of a beast. And so that was cool. You had to fight a double-headed dragon. And they used, like, the rotation, like they did in Castlevania 4, Super Castlevania. Gave you seizures. Mm -hmm. Graphics were pretty good. And that was in my number five. Fight it out. <laughs> That's my number five, Ogre Battle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't think that this game would be on most people's top five list. Probably Super Ghouls and Ghosts is probably not on most people's top five list either, so kudos to, for that, <laughs> even though I think it's gay. Um, you know, I just love the concept of this game, the way that the maps are, are placed out, the way that the battles are fought. It's totally not a game that requires any sort of hand-and-eye coordination. It's all strategy-based, and I, I just love that. Even during the battle scenes, I mean, you're not telling this person to go fight this enemy you're saying in general I want you to fight the strongest enemy or in general I want you to fight the leader I want you to fight the weakest enemy you're just giving them directions you're not telling them precisely what to do and I like that um, I like also that um, your character's story changes depending on how how you draw your tarot card in the beginning of the game uh, how how your character is perceived by the people of uh, is it Avalon? Is that what it's called? I think it, I think it is. Um, so basically, your, your charisma goes up or down depending on how your army fights. Like if you pick on weaker enemies, your charisma is going to go down because they think you're just a bully, I guess. But if you're able to defeat stronger enemies, your charisma is going up because you're seen as kind of like the underdog. And it just it changes your story. It changes, uh, you know, what people will join your army or what people will choose to fight against your army it's just such a cool game it's i i love everything about this game to be honest with you it could use a little bit more hand-eye coordination but the, the one big downside for me on this game is that you cannot save in the middle of a level and sometimes those levels are like four to five hours long and i remember there were times when i'd leave my snes on all day because i'd go to school and come back home and i'd finish a level but so I guess my parents paid a little bit too much for their electricity bill on those days, but I, it's just a great game. I, I wish there were more games like it, to be honest with you. It's such a huge game, and <clears> if you have it, you're lucky to have it because it's rare. And that's a game that I would I didn't mind playing because it was so long, because every battle offered something different. Mm -hmm. You could set your troops to where you want them and just 
leave them like at the crossroads of a bridge or yeah. in the middle of a forest and hope you could even travel once you defeat all the enemy units you could travel to different parts of the map and find hidden items find out <laughs> and find like dragons and have them join you and yes. it was so tight my favorite team I had Warren nice. uh, preferably I promoted him to a lich yes. eventually and he had two silver dragons or gold yeah they were gold. Like gold dragons. And it was like, and he would stand in the middle of them with his arms out like Gandalf when he did You Shall Not Pass. <laughs> and he had a dragon on each side. <laughs> That's so tight. You remember how Ken Cheney got that game? No. He got me into this game, so I, I he, mean, he, he got me into this. I mean, he got, we were already into it, but he got us more into it than he, because he told us of the whole reputation meter and how you have to be weak and go fight the bosses. And, right, right, right. Um, did, didn't he rent it from Blockbuster and not give it back? Oh, that's right. I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, uh, he just uh, he, he told the clerk that he lost it. <laughs> and he only had to pay whatever the retail value was for that that's game. That's tight. That's smart. Yeah. I, I had a copy of the game in my 20s, but I don't remember why I ended up selling my SNES. I'm sure it was for some stupid reason, but that went with it. I regret that very much. So Yeah. I might start playing it again. I, it's it's available on WiiWare. I know you're not really into that, but it's it is available. That's a, I I played it probably like three or four years ago. Oh, cool. What I like is uh, how the how when you're fighting uh, the large battle, the time will shift from night to day, yeah. and that'll give different attributes or mm -hmm. attributes. And the werewolves turn into werewolves instead of human form. Yeah. And the vampires. When it's during the daytime, they're in their coffin. They're in the coffin, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, and the, the, like you said, the units will even fight differently. Like, you know, if, you're, if your character is low on char charisma, he's going to fight better at night. Mm -hmm. It's it just, it, I, I like how in-depth they made the game. It's, it's like a big, big, giant chess match, and I just love that. I don't like how you can't really have your unit leader fight. Because his charisma will go down. Yeah. I mean, if you depend on what you want to yeah. do. If you want to be a low charisma, <laughs> charisma guy, then you can. Yeah, I guess. But you're right. It's, it's well. That, I don't know. I kind of like that because it makes the game more challenging. That you know, there's a unit out there that you essentially can't use. Yeah. I always use them just to liberate the cities. Is that what you did? Yeah. I mean, if you want to get the 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 good guy ending, yeah. it's kind of what you had to do. Yeah. We never had a fight except the boss, and then we'd have them liberate everything. Yep. And then there was that one map or battle where they didn't want to be liberated. Then I remember that. Whenever you would liberate, your charisma meter or your oh, charisma really? meter would go down. <laughs> That's funny. So they'd say, liberation, and they'd be boo. -boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, I like the... Uh, the, 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 the voices that they use in the game. There's also a, really, a lot of really cool music in that game, too. Another uh, team that I like is the Neb with her pumpkin heads. <laughs> that was pretty tight. The pumpkin heads were cool. I, didn't like, I don't like the witches, though. Their, yeah. their attacks just are too weak. They Most of the time, they just stun. Yeah. I really like them. My, one of my favorite units was Gilbert with the, the wyverns or the worms. Yeah. Those, those things kick so much ass, and they can just cover so much ground so quickly. Like if I saw a, a unit, a bad guy unit jetting from my uh, my base, I just send Gilbert over there and you take him out. I forgot quick. that you 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 when you move your character, it depend on the terrain how fast they move. Mm -hmm. If it was in the ocean, you're like spending days in the oh, ocean yeah. or in the mountains. mountains. Yeah, but Gilbert would just cover so much ground so quickly, and he would just hop on his dragon. Yep, pretty much. And that's the unit I always use to search for stuff too, because you can just kind of zigzag through, mm -hmm. zigzag throughout the entire map looking for different stuff. So that's my number five over battle. Cool. My number five is going to have to be WWF Royal Rumble. Super tight game. It had <laughs> Mr. Perfect in it, Lex Luger, uh, Razor Ramon, Razor Ramon, and it just brought. I tried to think, because if I had my way, I'd put all role-playing games on here, and I wouldn't try to give everything a fair chance. There's nothing wrong with that. And, um, uh, Royal Rumble actually is a game where I have memories of Brandon and Matt. We're all playing together, 
and we would face against Matt and torture him because we we were button mashing kings and when you locked up you had to do button mashing really fast and <laughs> he was still like six or something and he wasn't quite good at it yet and then so we'd let him go all the way up to where he almost could do a move on the meter then we just button mash him all the way back down <laughs> total douche about it <laughs> and then he he told our mom that we were cheating and we we're like we can't cheat real talent but <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you could pull the chairs out, hit people with the chairs, and do the perfect flex. Uh, yeah. A lot of people will prefer the arcade game over Royal Rumble, but I actually liked fighting in the Royal Rumble and throwing people over the rope and stuff. And I think you could pick Undertaker in that one, too. Nice. Yep. So that was my number five. Did you get my message I sent you yesterday? Yeah. Uh, I was at a, uh, a training for work. It was called... It had something to do with time management, and the the trainer was trying to say, you know, you shouldn't strive for perfect because it's unattainable. There's no such thing as perfect, and it's a waste of time. It's basically, there was a time management training, and I was thinking in my head, I almost said it out loud. This guy clearly doesn't know who Kurt Hennig is. <laughs> I almost said it too, but it probably no one there probably would have laughed. Yeah, so I didn't say it. If we were there, you probably would have said it. Huh? I would have said it if you guys were there for sure. Did you watch SmackDown last night? Oh, yeah, I did. Is it Wyatt Brother? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my those fools, dude. They just annihilated those two guys. Yeah. That was crazy. That cleaning clothesline was tight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that the uh, is that the, the, the big guys finishing one? I think so. What is it called? The Abigail or something like that? Oh, Kiss kiss of Abigail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> trying to rush me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh... My, n- I throw a top. <laughs> My number four is Chrono Trigger. Great RPG. It's been talked about. Uh, you start as this kid named Chrono who wakes up to go to a fair. It's a Millennium Fair. And basically one event leads to another and all hell breaks loose. You're traveling through time, meeting all different people. Ayla, Frog, Luca, she joins you, but I never really used her. <laughs> um, Robo. He was kind of lame too. Artwork designed by Akira Toriyama. Yeah, and um, great music in that game too. It is. Yeah, one of my favorite music in RPGs. A Magus, Magus could join you, or you, I, I never got it. You could either fight Magus as Frog or have him join you. And we always said, of course he's going to join us. Hmm. And it's stupid because they they never did any like real triple threats with him, right? With Chrono because he was an optional character. Mm-hmm. The only way to use Magus is using equipping the rocks, the rocks, or the gold, or the black, or silver, or. And I just recently beat this on the DS, and it's pretty fun. What ending did you get? Oh no, I didn't really beat it. I got to the Black Omen. And I stopped playing it, oh, much okay. like all my other RPGs that I play, <laughs> like Nino Kuni. I still haven't beat that, even though I'm at the end. Do you have the special edition? Of Nino Kuni? No, that goes for a heck of money. Okay. That's dumb. <laughs> so, Chrono Trigger, number four. My, my number four is Super Mario World. Um, we were just talking about this with Mega Man X. It's just super duper fun game. Um, the controls are awesome. It does require hand-eye coordination, but it, there's just so much stuff that you can do. Fly, swim, ride a dinosaur. I mean... There's anything, anything you can do with Mario. Um, I like the way the map was set out. Kind of, kind of followed the same vein as uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, where you could uh, walk to a different level and play that level. But in this particular game, there was like all sorts of different ways that you could beat each level. And of course, as as is kind of the trend now, you can play the game all the way to full completion, get every single level beaten in a certain way, and just to feel kind of proud of yourself I guess but of course there's the star road that you can use to, to work from different different worlds um, I think that the all, all the levels in the star road are called like groovy or mm-hmm. uh, tubular and well you had star road you had to get all the keys on star road and then you went to the special level uh, that's what I'm referring yeah. to yes my special level those levels are pretty high hard when we were little that was pretty easy though Right, it's another example of a game that doesn't necessarily have to be super hard in order to be enjoyable. 
I, I, I just find the game to be very enjo enjoyable. Um, it's the first game that I ever played for Super Nintendo, so, I mean, it's, it's got that right up top. It's got, it got a ton of nostalgic value for me. Um, you're kind of in, you're introduced to Yoshi, who becomes a staple in the Mario Brothers uh, series. Um, you can do all sorts of cool new things with Yoshi. Yoshi can fly, he can blow, flop, blow fire, um, he can stomp things, he can get you over terrain that you, you wouldn't be able to otherwise. He's got, I guess he's got some pretty sturdy boots on or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's just a really fun game. A lot of cool concepts introduced, and uh, that's my number four, Super Mario World. You remember the commercial for the Super Nintendo? No, I don't. It was so sick. Yeah. They showed like Super Mario 64, and they had all the like... Do we Super Mario World? What did I say? Mario 64. 64. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they were like... 16-bit graphics and yes. they showed all the colors and that. No. it was hecka tight. It was all fast, like a bunch of clips thrown together. It was hecka tight. We, we, yeah, I remember we recorded it and kept rewinding it on a VHS tape. Because <laughs> they hardly ever showed video game commercials on TV. Not like they do now, but I mean, it's pretty scarce now, but back then it was even more scarce. Well, even now, you just get Madden and uh, any sort of first-person shooter game. Call of Duty, yeah. Black Ops, Call of Doo Doo. I don't even know. It. There's no like four of them now, like yeah, Modern Warfare like and I don't know. Special something or other. I don't know. I don't play any of them. Yeah, it's, we don't like first person shooters, uh, except on a rare occasion, of course. Um, <coughs> my number four is going to be Super Mario RPG. Oh, nice. Great game. Uh, they Square and Nintendo came together and created this monster of a game. You had uh, Bowser joining forces with you. It had its own original story. Uh, you, you had uh, a new enemy introduced, which didn't come on later games. Uh, Booster. Remember him? Booster's Tower. When he stole Princess and was trying to force her to marry him. Yeah. And then uh, there was a part where you could you had to find the crown. You had to find all these things for the wedding, uh, and if you did it fast enough, Preach would give someone a kiss, and there was four options, um, and the funniest one is Peach would, uh, Bowser would actually end up kissing Mario, I don't know how they did that, but why that made sense, but that was so, so funny to me, the Axel Rangers, uh -huh. like the Power Rangers, they're all different colors, and then they formed into a robot unit, and they also had, a, was it uh, Clulux or Chaos, uh, the secret Final Fantasy yeah. boss. He had four crystals as like a hidden boss, which is extremely powerful. But um, that's my number four. Great role playing game. They fused Mario with uh, role playing. They need to remake something like that. And they introduced Gino in that game, and people get such a boner off of that guy. And I really didn't get it. I that's mean, why was, I didn't mention him. And that was, I mean, it was pretty cool, but people were like, eh, putting Gino back. Did, did, did Smash Brothers, like, just, you know, cut this part about Gino. He doesn't deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> Mello deserves my time more than Gino. Oh, Mello sucks. Exactly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I need to go back and play that game. I played that game as a child, but I don't really remember the storyline at all. And it's very fun. Yeah. I think Gino uh, promotes Pepsi. <laughs> Stop trying to make me mad. <laughs> <laughs> Number three on my list is Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. My favorite Zelda game of all time, and they're releasing a sequel for it for the 3DS, which I'm mm -hmm. eventually going to have to get, but um, it looks amazing. But yeah, Legend of Zelda, you have to get three, pe three pennants in the beginning to help rescue Zelda from the wizard Agnum. Aganum. Huh? Aganum. What'd I say? Agnum. Okay. So with these three... Penance of wisdom, power, and courage. You could beat Agnum, and then <laughs> you and then come to find out that's not the end of the game. The whole world twists over. No, you, you get the master sword when you get the three penance. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. You need the three penance to get the master sword to beat Agnum, and then once you beat him, the world dissipates and you're thrown into the dark world where there's seven other levels you have to go through and it's just a huge game of its time. And so the, the light world and dark world are two separate worlds <clears throat> and if you don't have the right item your form completely changes in the dark world and you're a little pink bunny. You know what <laughs> the item you need is? The moon pearl? 
Um, it's funny because everybody in that game has a light world and a dark world form, and it's just funny Lynx would be a pink bunny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, even going through all those those ma those dungeons is. It's not hard. I mean, it's not as hard as it could have been, like Legend of Zelda, how they don't even tell you where the dungeons are, and just you know give you the general idea of where they are. But they give you a map, yeah. But uh, just getting to them it could be quite difficult, and getting through them, like the first Dark World level, enemies are up to the max. They're taking like three hearts when they hit you. It's and, and in order to get to the dungeon. You need to pay some stupid ass monkey a hundred rupees to stupid. show you into the dungeon. <laughs> and if you were not a coin or rupee hoarder like we were, we'd have to fight enemies until we had enough money to form to show us the entrance. Go cut some grass. Yep. <laughs> uh, my number three is Final Fantasy three hmm. or Final Fantasy six to you purists out there. Um just a great story, great characters. Um, not a game that I would play because I want to challenge my hand-eye coordination skills. It's a classic RPG game. Um, I mean, you got Kefka, Terra, you got a ton of great espers that you get to work with. Um, again, another game that has dark and light worlds uh, after Kefka fucks shit up <laughs> with the esper moving the uh, the statues around. I mean, I, I named my daughter after a character from this freak freaking game. I mean. Wait, Rose is from 2. Why did I write that? Uh, that's not correct. Rose is from Final Fantasy 2. Maybe you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see what I, I wrote down. I, was, I wrote down that I was going to name my daughter Celeste. That was another option. Celeste is in Final Fantasy 3. But my wife didn't want to go for Celeste, so I, I got Rose out that of it. That sounds mystical, though. What's that? Celeste. Mystical. Like, like Celestial. Yeah. I, I, think, I think... I don't know. I like Rose a lot, but I think Celeste is more unique. So I was kind of favoring Celeste. Brad, give me some water. Bottle of water. For what? I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> um, and I just wrote down a couple of things about Celeste's character. I liked how she defected from the, the Empire after, you know, Kefka went over the line and poisoned all of Doma Castle's water. Um, she just, she had a set of principles and she, she stood by them. So I liked her character a lot. I also liked uh, Shadow and Interceptor a lot. Um, he always tried to act like he was a hard ass, that he was just a mercenary, just trying to make his way through life. He didn't really have any sort of principles, but I think deep down everyone knew that he was he was really fighting for the cause. So was he Rome's dad? Shadow? Yeah, because only him and her could wear the memento ring, and I thought they hinted at it. I think that sounds familiar, but I don't know. And plus... Interceptor was um, had a bond with her. Yes, that's true. Huh. That's true. I thought there was something in there when they, you slept when Shadow was in your party and you slept at uh, Thasma. What is it called? The Blue Thasma. Age. Yeah. When um, you slept at that town, he would have memories and flashbacks of being in that town. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that there's some kind of connection there. Uh, it kind of like like Nick said, it, it's like there, but I'm not for sure. I don't think they ever directly said that, yeah. but I mean it's. Definitely an interesting theory. I would buy into it. Um, what is uh, what is Rome's grandfather? Not Strago. not Rome, Strago. Is he just like an adopted yeah. grandfather kind of thing? But I don't remember him ever really hinting at no. knowing Shadow or anything like that. No, he went ape shit after the Kefka whole thing. He was like in a trance, didn't That's want to true. do nothing. Yeah, and with the cult to Kefka, like you look old little geriatric. Was he with the cult to Kefka? Yeah, yeah. Oh, when you go up to Kefka's tower or whatever it's called, he's out the there marching tower. with them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. So that's my number three. I'll, I'll, again, great music. Um, you know, Umatsu is the man. Yeah. So, uh, my number, my number three, right? Yes. Final Fantasy three was my number mm. three as well, nice. uh, because it it really grasped me when I was young, and the whole world went got torn apart, and you're like you're left with Celeste, and you're like, what the hell? Everyone's dead. And how are you going to beat the game? Then you end up finding people. You end up finding Setzer, who gets you the airship. And you're like, okay, cool. I finally got a chance at this. It's all going to be okay. <laughs> it was just a game, but I was like, this is devastating. Yeah. And uh, I remember spending countless hours in the belt with Gal. Yep. 
trying to get every single monster. It's horrible. See, that's one thing I never did. I never, I didn't really like Gauss characters, so I just kind of let him. Yeah, neither did we. Be. <laughs> we 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 wanted to just get all the monsters, kind of. I don't know, like Pokemon, I guess. I uh, collection bug. That, <laughs> that must be what it is, because I didn't get. A, I didn't like that part of it. And uh, I then Gauss <clears throat> ends up be finding Gauss' dad in the forest, <laughs> and he like gets all dressed and becomes sophisticated and go talks to him, but. His dad, like, just, you know, fuck you still, and Cal's all depressed, and um, I just thought it was like, oh, he's gonna have Alzheimer's or something, <laughs> something's wrong with that guy, but um, my favorite character in that is Saban, uh, always has been, and uh, it's just the whole dynamic of the game after Kefka moves the statues and everything becomes dark, it was just something that just grabbed me in that game, so... That's why I put that up there on my list. Yeah, and you didn't. You knew that you wouldn't be able to fix the world once it happened. To once you saw it, how it ended up, there was no fixing that. They had Esper sex. <laughs> <laughs> was that that whole part, that whole story of like when it shows Tara's birth and everything. That, was that took kidding. so long. Yeah, and you had to play through it too. Yeah, with Madeline yeah. was her dad. Yeah. The mom took Esther seed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number two is Final Fantasy three. Yeah, that game. Uh, lots been said about it already, but I know it's cool. They had the Colosseum where you had to fight. You got to fight for items, and the auction house was fun. That's where you got Shadow back too. The Sometime. Colosseum, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't you have to bid bed the uh, assassin dagger to get him back? That sounds right. I don't remember. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, because he goes into the cave of the belt and like the behemoths are like tearing him up, and he's like dead, and you have to go save him. Mm. <clears throat> and yeah, the opera house, the opera scene, the opera scene was amazing. I love that. I want to try to find that and download that song, that whole opera. You want the sixteen-bit version of it? No, I. They have it. Um, is it on that CD? The 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 distant world one. Mm-hmm. I know the Black Mages did it, but yeah. I think I have yeah. it on. That's right. By, actually performed by an orchestra. And with actual opera singers. Yeah. That's cool. <clears throat> it is really cool. Yep, yeah, so not my number two was Final Fantasy III. Who was the actress in the opera? Celeste. God, yes. <laughs> it was, wasn't her name Maria, but she had, she was like, well, Maria's sick. What happened to Maria? Um, they... They took her because they yeah, wanted they, to trick Setzer. Oh. <laughs> that she was going to go on board and just... Uh, How did they... Tri- did, did, they did they kidnap her? Or did they, I think they yeah, poisoned her or something, didn't they? Mar- Maria? I just thought they... Um, Hit her? No. They, they made a deal with the opera guy mm-hmm. and said, uh, Celeste looks like Maria. Can we just switch her out? And then Setzer will take her. Remember the MP equipment? That's correct, but that's right. What was that? The MP equipment? The imp equipment, like so. the imp crown and the imp spear or something, imp halberd. And if you're an imp, it increased in power. <laughs> you could get I mean, I remember the equipment, but I, why would you want to stay an imp? <laughs> <laughs> and the cursed ring or the cursed shield? The cursed shield, you had to fight like 400 battles or, or 256 to make it uncursed. Uh, I, I don't remember what it co- became, the Aegis shield maybe? Paladin shield? Probably. My number two is Final Fantasy II, otherwise known as Final Fantasy IV. This game I actually did name my uh, daughter after the, the female protagonist, Rosa, the white mage. Um, it also has one of my favorite characters in all the video game history, Kane. Um, Would he have been your number one on the character top five characters of all time? I hadn't thought about it, but I, he would either be he'd have to be in top three, probably number one, but I. I'd have to think about it a little bit more. Yeah. <clears throat> um, he's a dragoon. That's fucking sick, dude. <laughs> How many people are dragoons? In my book, dragoons are called riders. Nice. That's how I got around the whole loophole of Kane being a dragon. <laughs> um, I liked uh, the storyline again. Another great storyline. I, I prefer this storyline to the Final Fantasy III storyline. Um contain the twins of course they I like how they make the ultimate sacrifice to uh, save the party uh, the main character Cecil 
who I definitely would have named my son after if I'd had a boy. Uh, I even had my wife convinced of that. We we, we already <laughs> had this determined even before we found out the gender of our child. That's like, like a tie. She and she went for it. I was so I was so stoked. Dude, you would have had Cecil and Celis. Celis? Oh. <laughs> Cecil and Celeste. That'd if they were twins, that would have been tight. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Um, but I, I liked how he grew from being a dark knight into being a paladin. Um, and the way that he did it was really cool. He had to kind of fight off his inner demons. And the way that he did that was by not fighting at all, essentially. Um, it was a re really cool part um, up on that mountain. I can't remember the name of the mountain. Like Mile Ordeal. Or, I was going to say Ordeal, I thought. Um, Tyler was a cool character, a little crotchety old wizard, but um, very wise. Um, he also died in the course of the game. Could never get that 99 magic point. And, uh, <laughs> 98 all the way. <laughs> uh, so again, just great character, great story, um, and I think it kind of set the tone for future Final Fantasies. The boss battles were amazing on that game. Another, the four, the four elements, the four fiends. Another, another, another example of great music too. The music, I yes. love that. I, I downloaded that uh, the Black Mages version. Oh, it's awesome, for sure. And you had uh, the the Mega Sisters. Mm -hmm. That's where they're introduced. They come back in some of the other games. And then also in that same uh, dungeon with the Mega Sisters, you have to fight the CPU, right? Is it the same dungeon? Is it? Then the giant. Yeah. Oh. Wait, do you have the Mega Sisters in the Giant? No. Oh, okay. But the CPU is cool too. Yeah. After you fight the four fiends, you had to fight the CPU. That's right. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then yeah, then Golbez shows up. Yeah. Oh man, beast. Fuck shit up. <laughs> but that whole another cool storyline, by the way. The whole storyline. The whole. Story line, the whole uh, yeah. Aren't they? Aren't they supposed to be born from dragons or something? I remember that part. <laughs> I remember the one to be born from a dragon from the beginning poem. No, they're Lunarians. That's right. They're not. And it sucked that when you fought Golbez, he was so huge on the screen, yet him and such a fucking brother, Pusaya. When he's with Pusaya, he shrinks down. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another character that I didn't mention was Rydia. I, I liked her character a lot too. And she's another character that you get to see uh, the progression of. Like when you first meet her, she's a little girl. But later, she, I think she like falls off on the ship at one point. And yeah, then she gets followed by Leviathan. Right, that's it. Uh, she comes back later in the game, and she, you, you can see she's grown up into being a young woman. She's like in slut mode. Oh, man. Have some respect. <laughs> uh, but could be respectful. <laughs> <laughs> she she gained a whole lot of abilities. She she gained a lot of allies too because she her call ability just improved tenfold. She was an amazing character. I liked her a lot as well. She lost her white magic, but her black magic got increased. God yes, she used whips. <laughs> huh? What's whips? Whips. You don't know what oh, whips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're serious. <laughs> So that's my number two, Final Fantasy two. My number two is going to be Earthbound. Nice. Such a great game. Uh, it takes place in present day, so it's like Final Fantasy, but with you know modern concept cars and hippies going around trying to beat you. And they also have a Ku Klux Klan cult in the <laughs> second town. Except they're what purple or blue? Blue, huh? blue. Yeah, they're blue. like blue, blue, nomi, blue, blue, and <laughs> they have the hoods like the Klan too. And I was yeah. like, I can't believe they put this in the game. <laughs> Never been ported to Wii. Yeah. And there's some, like, sound uh, discrepancy. Yeah. yeah. Like, the Runaway 5 sound or something sounds like some song or something, and they couldn't get rights to it. But huh. I'm lucky enough to own a whole copy with the scratch and sniff stickers and the <laughs> big old box that Brandon got for me for Christmas. I'm never going to get sell that or anything. I'm going to keep it. It's in my game room right now. I actually have plans to... Um, take the kids Xbox out to the garage mm -hmm. and then I'm going to buy them a TV for out there I'm going to take over that game room sure, yeah. it's mine yeah <laughs> no I, more Xbox in the house you know, I just learned the move Iron Tail and as you notice I don't have a tail <laughs> <laughs> you've never seen that on Reddit Primate goes up to Pikachu and is like I just learned the move Iron, Iron Tail and I don't have a tail <laughs> And because she was like, "Oh fuck," <laughs> you, <laughs> like, you know, you know what that means, right? And because she was like, "Oh yeah," 
Speaking uh, speaking about Pikachu, how are you doing with their Pokemon training? It's coming along overall. Uh, we extended our Pokemon challenge to, to another week because I just didn't have any time to train my Pokemon. And I know Brandon's been training his for like two months to a year. And it's just like, it'd be a slaughter. So at least this time I'll have a, a small, slight percentage of a chance well, of winning. to be fair, I don't have any items on this white game. Like, I transferred over my Pokemon with their held items. They're like, this is staying in the bag on Platinum. Really? Yeah. It didn't transfer over my items. Oh, is that, that's why I don't have certain items. Yeah, so I, you have to get them from the Battle okay. Subway. Okay. Subway. Yeah, yeah. Subway. Um... Earthbound, it's, yeah, the, I love level three. Three, mm -hmm. when you have to go put the zombie fly paper down and yeah, catch all the zombies, cool. and they're stuck on the floor and they can't move, and I love the um, Master Belch boss, who's a big pile of shit, like on... No, Earthbound. he's not poop. He's like everything. He's puke. puke. Puke and poop and everything all in one. And um, he has little minions who burp like... <laughs> well, it's a little more high pitched than that, but when my wife burps, sometimes she sounds like it. I'm like, oh, you, you sound like a little belch thing. She's like, shut up. I'm like, that's a compliment. She's <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, that's what it is. <laughs> ah. <laughs> like that. Uh, but uh, that whole game is just amazing. I love, I love it. I'm halfway through it, and I, I keep playing it off and on. My number one is Lufia 2, Rise of the Sinistrals. I said before that the thing that sells it the most, it has a great storyline and the boss battles, like the, um, what are they called? The Sinistrals. They're huge on the screen. And when you first uh, go out to fight against the Sinistrals, you come across the weakest one, Gades, right? In the 3DS version, they call him Goddess. Uh -huh. But I call him Gades. Yeah. yeah. And... He just slaughters you. He kills you, and you're like, how are you supposed to be this guy? But then you eventually become stronger to fight him. But the ancient dungeon, that's still by far the my funnest side quest, and I can do that months straight without getting tired of it. Brandon and I used to wear, um, we'd be stark naked, and then we'd tie our sheets around our neck and have, like, capes. And we'd go and play this game from during the summertime for, like, dusk till dawn. Remember the ice balloon? That was the best water in the world. We, we froze a giant water balloon, and then we cra we took it out, took the rubber off, cracked it open, and it was like all liquid in the middle, all water, and we just like drink out of it. With a straw? Yeah. But that ancient dungeon's no joke. That's like the funnest side quest ever for a Super Nintendo game. I keep, I actually keep looking on my phone for different um, dungeon games to play, just to hopefully find one that's kind of like it, and of course there's nothing like it out there, but... No, because you get to the ancient cave, ancient dungeon, like halfway through the game, so it, if you find strong items or benefit, and they encourage you to go in the dungeon more, but uh, bump, get bump all the way down to level one, play through it, try to find blue shard chests, and that's just like the best part of the game. Uh, my number one is Lufia 2 as well, so I could just get that out of the way. So I don't, Nick can't go, and then I'm, oh, my Lufia 2. Mm. So that's my number one game. My number one is one that's already been mentioned as well. It's uh, Legend of Zelda Link mm. to the Past. Uh, I didn't really have too much to add to it. I just think it's a per basically a perfect game. Like everything, there's everything. Music, gameplay, cool side quests, cool storyline. Um, I mean, you get to play around with the sword. You get to use magic. All sorts of different varieties of accessories. Treasures everywhere. It's just... It's got everything. There's, there's the nothing missing. The boss battles are amazing. Yes. I love the boss battles. Yep. That's something that I, I was holding to the end because I kind of figured Nick might have that. I almost put that as my number one, but the I love fighting the cat beast on the first level of the Dark World. He's got the big mask on. He's like more of a dinosaur than a cat, but you could either bomb his mask off or you could hammer it off, and he had you know, a big tail that swings at you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the other one is the... the the two-headed dragon on level eight, I think. Seven, the, Turtle Rock. Yeah. And um, that thing, you could you have to use your fire wand to hit the ice wand, or your ice wand hit the fire wand. And Brandon and I would constantly use the wand. We didn't know once you froze it, you could go and hit it. Mm -hmm. So that took like all of our magic. We thought he was the hardest boss ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's one part I wanted to mention on the level seven, 
is where you have to use your wand in the dark, and you have to go around the whole track and put like a pot on a certain button. You have to light all the fires, I think. When and then the door will open. open. Yeah, that's always what's tough for me. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why was it tough? I don't remember it being tough though. Because you had to use your wand to get get it on the button just right, and I could never get it on there. Huh. And it we'd go around or disappear or something. I don't <laughs> know. Yeah. Um, Lufia, you, you guys both said that that was your favorite game. Do you know if that's available when we were? It's not. God damn it. I've, I've got never played that game. I've got a copy though. I don't have an SNES. <laughs> I could get you one. Okay. <laughs> so if, if when he gets to the ancient dungeon, we should all go over there wear capes, too. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Melissa would love that. We just walk around like this, and then if she went in a room, we could just be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love to play. I'm, I'm all about playing those games. I mean, I know there's so many games out there that I haven't played that I would totally enjoy. It's just particularly with the SNES, I think, as I mentioned, I think this is the greatest console that there has ever been. It, not not because the graphics are great, not because the you know the controls are outstanding. It's just the stories with the games that they made. I think are the best. And I I really would like to play that Lufia game. Yeah, I only played Earthbound once, and I played it over the course of like a year and a half while I was going while I was in college. I mean, as a college student I didn't have a whole lot of time to play video games. Did you have that game when you sold your SNES too? No, that was a game that I had to play on a emulator on oh, my okay. computer actually. Yeah. So I did want to mention the Secret of Mana. Oh yeah. David Wilson, if you're out there listening, we know you have our copy somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this fucker of a kid named David Wilson we went to junior high with him, and we went to Willow to I don't know, I, he probably went there all four years, I don't even know. But he he loved that game. He, like, jizzed all over it. And so he's like, can I just borrow it one more time? I won't borrow it ever again. Me and Brandon, we're like, yeah, sure, go ahead. And then so we go after school to the Knowledge Bowl, and he comes in, and he's like, you will never guess what happened. Someone stole my whole backpack from gym class, and guess what was in there? Your fucking game. And I was like... Oh, you have it, you little motherfucker. <laughs> I know you do. And we almost called his house to ask his mom if he had it there, but we just never got the guts to do it. Yeah, but you uh, let him off easier than I would have. You could have done something. No, because you had already made the deal. What deal? He said he'd give you two NES games in exchange for uh, Secret of Mana, and they were two stupid-ass games. What were they? I don't remember, but I was like, I told him I would. I was like, What? We could have had him pay for another copy. You're like, he didn't have any money. Because his mom has money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't remember that. But that probably sounds like because I, I just was in shock. I see. I have an honor, uh, honorable mention. Joe and Mac. With the caveman game. For real? Yeah. That was cool. You got to go on a map kind of like Mario and fight dinosaurs. And you got different upgradable weapons like a hammer or a wheel and a fire. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, Super Metroid is one I it's on my honorable mention list. Great game. You ever uh, play a game called Populous? Yes. <laughs> that game's yeah. like a fun dude. I love that game. You're like a lord. Well, not even a lord. You're like a deity on a land because you, you you don't actually have a character. You just kind of control the way the landscape is, yeah. and and eventually your your clan of people will kind of migrate to where you want them to go. Yeah. It's a cool cool game. I don't think that that's a one-player game, though. Um, have, have you ever played a game called Gemfire? Oh, man. Um, Ken Chaney would get a boner off that game. That's that's where I got my boner from. Yeah, he gave, yeah. he provided me with that boner. He gave you a boner. Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> with Gemfire. That game's so fucking fun. Yeah. So you guys didn't like it that much? We never played it. Really? Mm-mm. It's a really we fun game. Talk about it. That's, I believe that's a two-player game, too. You can play it with two players. We saw it at... Uh, we actually pledged a poetry contest. I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast before. It sounds familiar. Yeah, with the Lufia, the Lunar songs. Mm-hmm. We, we uh, pledged a, a plagiarized a poetry contest and wrote those down. We got like $10 gift cards to Tower and that game was in there. We didn't know anything about it and we left it there. Oh no. It was, it's a Gemfire Super Nintendo. I was like, huh. 
Ah, don't know what that is. Do you, do you know how much it's worth? Like if you were to look on eBay for it or whatever? Mm-hmm. No? You're interested to know. Brandon to look it up real quick. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Mm-hmm. Those, are good, those are good games. I've got one for Nintendo. Did you look it up? I'm going to oh. um, There's just so many. There's like, I could sit, sit here and talk three hours about just Super Nintendo games. Yeah. And I'm sure all the listeners could too because there's just so uh, Turtles in Time, Final Fight, even though it wasn't the true arcade port, <laughs> the Mega Man X's. Oh, yeah. It says you can get it for 16. Oh, oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I just need to get my hands on an SNES. <laughs> Now, where, where might I get my hands on an SNES? From my collection. <laughs> I've got an extra one. Yeah? Yeah. Are you looking to part ways with it? Yeah. I'll give it to you. You're just going to give it to yeah. me? Yeah. I'll lo- I'll, how about you loan it to me? Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> like I loaned you that treasure chest. You're welcome to have it back whenever <laughs> you want. It's cool. No. <laughs> yeah. I just need to see if I could, if I have control. I think I have an extra controller. I'll, I'll get, it, get it to you. That'd be cool. With Lufia. I might have to get Gym Fire then. Yeah. Maybe I'll maybe that'll be the deal. Like when I'm done with Gym Fire, I'll give it to you or something. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, because I've got that triple system that had plays Nintendo, Sega, and Super Nintendo carts, and I got another Super Nintendo hooked up in the game room. So I'm almost positive I'm going to move that into the game room. So I won't have use for it anymore. Yeah, there, there's just so many good games. It's it would be it would take a long time, like you said, to mention all of them. But those were just a couple of them um, that really stood out to me. So what's going on with Matty G? Is he coming on the podcast? Mm-hmm. We were trying to get him. You know, he he when I uh, I messaged him a couple days ago and he said something about how it's in the middle of the day when we're recording and he needs that time to do some sort of maintenance on his house. And then earlier today, he said, well, you know, if it keeps on raining, I'll probably come by. And it's been raining consistently, and still no, no Maddie G to hmm. be seen or to be heard from. I was, so I don't know. I was going to mention our top five next time could be worst Super Nintendo games, but I don't know what I'd put down for that. Uh, Maybe it's okay. Could, it's okay to have a challenge. Yeah. The NES one was challenging. Okay. Maybe we could do that then. Because we're all here getting boners off Super Nintendo games. I'm sure there's a few rusty nails we could find. Yeah. Yeah. It was it that Zachary McDaniel who posted about his top five um, albums? Yeah. I'd like to see a lot more of that. For not only just albums, but any any of the top fives. I'd like to see what people's top five SNES games are, or bottom five NES games, or whatever the category is. It'd be nice to hear from other and, people about and that. Don't wait for an invite. Just start posting. Yeah. At Facebook, uh, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Like us, and you'll be able to post whatever you want. And you know, they can even be be on past episodes. You could go listen to episode six where we started it for the top five weapons of all time. You can just list whatever. And you can even challenge us to a Pokemon battle and we'll we'll accept your challenge. I won't. (laughs) Remember when I went to Nintendo World? Oh man, you fucking schooled that guy. (laughs) (laughs) You could use legendaries if you want. Did he use legendaries? No. Oh, okay. So he he was pretty confident in himself. Oh man, he was he yeah he thought he was a shit. He was like, "Do you have your game with you?" I'm like, "Matter of fact, I do." I pulled out my platinum game and uh, brought him around with one Pokemon. (laughs) What your Azelf? Which one? Caesar. Because he brought out Breloom and used uh, Sleep Powder or something and put me to sleep. Yeah, put me to sleep. But I used my Loomberry and woke up. Yeah. And I used Sword Dance and just bullet punched. That thing killed it. He brought out a Snorlax. I used Superpower, killed that in one hit. And um, his third Pokemon, I don't even know. I just killed that in like one or two hits, too. That's tight. Caesar is the man. Yep. Did he give you anything for it? No. You should have said, I want a free game if I beat you. I should have. I should have waited. I want Metroid Prime Trilogy new in the box. (laughs) Before that time, I think. I they were so. They were doing Dragon Warrior, yeah. Dragon Quest. I think Dragon Quest. Yeah. I heard that ringtone. I heard someone have it at the car dealership today. Oh, really? <laughs> Can you have me on my phone? No. Did they make any good uh, Dragon Warrior, Dragon Quest games for SNES? 
I don't think they made any. Yeah. They, I, they might they have. They might have been in Japan. Yeah, I think maybe five and six might have been Super Nintendo. All right, so this will end it for episode 21 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.